All right, welcome back. I'm gonna talk about finite time control. Basically, um, personally, as an academician, I didn't have in the past high interest on finite time control because, you know, one of the limitations of the existing finite time control approaches is that they do not guarantee basically convergence at a user-defined couple till t seconds. For example, what I mean by that, consider the scalar system x that equals the u. So existing methods commonly use signum based on functions and this is kind of a control signal absolute value of x alpha minus 1 and alpha is between 0 and 1. So basically you will see if you look at uh, papers on finite time control they more or less consider you know um, these type of um, discontinuous control signals and they guarantee that for example let's say we are doing stabilization x goes to 0 as t approaches the capital T and this capital T is your finite time convergence and it depends it is upper bounded uh, basically by a function that depends on your initial condition so that you know if you, for example, right, if you are starting from a cer certain initial condition, your finite time convergence takes, let's say, two seconds. If you start from another condition, this finite time convergence can take one second or three seconds. So, your yes, you converge in finite time, but, you know, your convergence time changes with respect to your initial condition. And because of that, I didn't have high interest in the past on finite time control. Then... During the summer, I was spending my time at Air Force and uh, uh, one of my collaborators, you know, said that, well, we said that we have applications that we want to, for example, do the missions at a user-defined capital T. For example, right, I mean, let's say we have a quadcopter. I want this quadcopter to land or go from point A to point B in five seconds. I don't want this, you know, going from A to B change with respect to my initial condition. Whatever happens, I would like to go at 5 seconds, 10 seconds at a user-defined capital T. Um, this is the case for many applications, right? Let's say you are doing an automation process, you know, do this mission at 5 seconds, then within the next 10 seconds do that then do this so a robotic arm grasp this target in 10 seconds so we have applications time critical applications that standard finite time control approaches won't buy us much um, so i was never a finite time person until that date and based on basically my encouragement from my collaborator i started to think how we can develop a new finite time control theory and i come up with this idea time transformation um i would like to explain in this video in plain terms very uh, simple way for scalar system okay so let's look at x dot equals to u i want uh, this system right now stabilization problem you can do the same for command following so this ordinary differential equation I want it to live in this interval 0 to capital T and I am going to choose this capital T T is user defined I want you know I will consider momentarily uh, stabilization problem X to go to 0 you know if I choose this capital to be t to be 1, I want x to go to 0 in 1 second, 2 in 2 seconds, I want to define it, I want to choose it rather than it is chosen by the initial condition. So now looking at x dot which is dx over dt, I can introduce s variable, s is the new time interval that I am going to define in a second. So basically I can do this, right, ds, ds ds divided ds is 1. So I can write this. Now, I want t, basically, when t goes to capital T, I want s to go to infinity. Why? Because if somehow I can take this ordinary differential equation that lives over the time interval 0 to capital T seconds, if I can you know, represent the same ODE on the another interval 
that is between zero to infinity or the infinite horizon, then I can apply all the control techniques that uh, you know for like Lyapunov stability over infinite intervals, input the state stability, so on and so forth. I can apply all the existing knowledge that I know to that new trans time transform ODE that lives between zero to infinity uh, seconds. So for this, now if you look at x dot, so x dot is basically dx over dt. So now I am using here this, dx over ds, ds over dt equals to u. This is the same ODE. Now I am rewriting this as dx over ds, ds over dt inverse u. Basically I take this and send it to the right hand side. Okay. Now I define a new control variable. U was my actual control. I am defining a virtual control. So in order to cancel this, I am choosing this to be ds over dt multiplied by v. So if you take this control signal, plug it here, you have x prime, x prime is dx over ds, this one, x prime equals to v. Now I had x dot equals to u, and I transformed this ordinary differential equation to a new time domain, stretch time interval. Now, this x prime equals to v as evolves on zero to infinity. Now, this is our uh, time domain that, uh, that we are more familiar with. We can, you know, there are many control tools, as I mentioned a couple seconds ago, there are many tools developed over the finite horizon and that we are more familiar with so that you know we can use all these techniques so i am now choosing this virtual control signal to be minus alpha v alpha is for now a positive constant then x prime becomes minus alpha x then we can say that as s goes to infinity x going to zero now this is kind of a brief introduction about the time transformation. Now, I would like to shift the gears to an example. Let's, to make, you know, to fully understand all these concepts, you know, I would like to uh, consider this time transformation that I took it from my paper, Finite Time Cooperative, Cooperative Engagement, Iterable Transactions of Automatic Control. So this is, and uh, this by the way, includes a comprehensive overview, literature overview, that talks about existing finite time control approaches or any other and more methods as well. So there are like uh, predefined finite time, uh, fixed finite time. There are a bunch of approaches aimed uh, for finite time control. So this is not a literature survey, but it is uh, uh, if my memory is correct, I am citing more than 40, 45 papers. So it, it has a very good literature review because this was one of the first papers that I entered to the finite time control domain. So uh, I also get help from my students. Uh, independently, we kind of comprehensively did the literature search uh, to make sure that what we are doing is novel and to the point. Um, I just wanted to make sure I am the, we are the one who is introducing this finite time transformation, uh, time transformation idea. All right, so let's look at this example. I want, you know, basically t, I am t to be linked to this uh, time transformation according to this, and t is the capital of time, right? One minus e to the minus s. So this time transformation links two time intervals. And we need to make this link because look at here, right? We are basically ds over dt. S must be linked to t, otherwise this will be zero and your uh, control uh, objective will not make any sense. So these two time intervals must be linked. So I am linking like this. This is the very first step that I adopted from this paper. So let's graphically understand what's going on. So as t approaches, or let's look at this, as s approaches the zero, right, as, as going from zero to infinity, then basically this term drops out, t goes from, from zero to capital T. So on the actual time interval that we live right now, or your system lives, like this uh, quadcopter, when in the actual time domain, 
um, solution of a system a approaches from zero to capital T, then on the other time interval, stretch time interval, you also we basically uh, it approaches from zero to infinity. All right. So now um, on the left we had some dt over ds or ds over dt. So this function time depends on this. If we take its derivative with respect to s, you are going to get capital T multiplied by e to the power of minus s. Well, um, you can also find ds over dt. So ds over dt, ds over dt is basically 1 divided by this capital T e to the power of minus s. Now, if you look at here, this also has t multiplied by e minus s. If you solve this time transformation for this term and plug it here, basically if you use this purple here, you are going to get 1 divided by t minus t. This is ds over dt. Now let's look at for the stabilization problem how our control signal will look like. So first of all, our control signal u was ds over dt multiplied by v. This was our control signal. Then we choose our virtual control signal to be minus alpha x, which I am plugging it here. So our control becomes, once you insert ds over dt, which is this, it is minus alpha t minus t multiplied by x. So when I plug here, basically I didn't want to plug 1 over capital T e minus s because we don't live you are you are going to implement this control algorithm but you don't in, you don't live on the s domain you live on the t domain that's why i am including here basically capital t minus t version and at first this may look scary right so your denominator grows um, there are a couple of solutions to this problem i mean one uh, engineering solution i will say where ba basically as you get closer to capital T, such rate this 1 over, so basically this function alpha over T minus capital T. If it is larger than a number, such rate it, and this is engineering solution, but I would like to give the mathematical treatment, basically how you can make uh, this uh, numerator going to faster than the denominator such that this control signal won't blow up. Um, now, before we go further, we already know that x going to 0 as s goes to infinity. Basically, it is coming from here, we just discussed. Now, I want to emphasize this. These ODEs live on two different time intervals, but they are, their solutions are the same. Their solutions, yes, they change differently on, on different time intervals, but they are linked as long as this time transformation that you choose is strictly increasing and continues the differentiable that I should mention. You need to choose your uh, time transformation like that. By the way, you can go to Google Scholar, just write my last name, Yuselin, uh, time transformation, finite time, and look at the journals. There are several papers that we consider this time transformation, um, scalar systems, double integrator systems, like in this paper, multi-agent systems, and, and uh, we have co-authored quite a bit of papers, and um, these um, many students, many of my students contributed to this research direction. Yang Tran, uh, he is right now at Air Force. Uh, Burak Sarsalmas, uh, he is right now assistant professor at, you know, Utah State University, Ehsan Arabi, uh, he is right now at Ford Research Lab, uh, Denis Kurtolo, right now my PhD student, and I'm sorry if I forget any other names, but you know, there are many, oh, of course, Kim Witt, uh, she's also right now my uh, PhD student, and so we published quite a bit. All right, so, um, since, so my point was, you know, X, we are looking at the same ODE on different time intervals, so their solutions are the same. Meaning that if x going to 0 as s goes to infinity, since solutions are equivalent, this means that limit x going to 0 as t goes to capital T, right? Because of this strictly increasing continuous differentiable time transformation, like the example given here. Now, um, uh, explaining this uh, for the first time, so, you know, so, sorry if 
you know, I'm also uh, talking about some studies, but focusing on the main point, I would like to establish boundedness of control uh, signal U, that I don't want this control signal to blow up. I mentioned the engineering solution, now theoretical mathematical uh, uh, way to treat this. I would like to create an ordinary differential equation for U, because this way I can analyze it. So I am taking U dot, I would like to find equations of motion for U, so I am differentiating it. U dot is basically minus alpha t over t x dot multiplied by this term. Basically u is this. If you take the time derivative, you are going to get this. We are on the time interval right now, actual time interval, t. Now, looking at here, x dot is u. And looking at this term, this is basically u itself, alpha x t over t. So basically, I am using here minus alpha t minus t u plus u multiplied by 1 t over uh, small t. So if you group these terms, since both depends on u, you have minus alpha minus 1 divided by t minus t multiplied by u. Now, like I transformed x dot to x prime to the stretch time interval here, I am going to do the same treatment for u dot. So u dot, or du over dt, is, you know, I am introducing this ds, ds, and basically u dot equals to this term, minus alpha, uh, minus 1, t over t, multiplied by u. Now, focusing on this part of the equation, du over ds is basically, I am sending this to the right, ds over dt inverse multiplied by this, but ds over dt is 1 over t minus t, so its inverse will basically, this term will cancel out with this denominator, so you end up having minus alpha minus 1 u. So we are now on the stretch time interval, right? So u prime, or du over ds, is minus alpha minus 1 u. So we know that this is a first order ODE, so if alpha is larger than 1, then u goes to 0 as s goes to infinity or t approaches the capital T. So we have this conclusion. So alpha needs to be cho chosen greater than 1. And if this happens, this control signal will not blow up theoretically. And, um, and basically, its numerator going to basically, since this is the case, its numerator must go faster to 0 than the denominator. Um, of course, you know, um, when you implement this code, you know, let's say, you know, capital T is 5 seconds, after like uh, 4.95 seconds, you still may want to saturate it, so, uh, you know, in order to prevent the high gain effect. But basically, um, this is it. And uh, we implemented this uh, finite time approach in hardware as well. Run simulations so it works successfully. I am also leaving a longer uh, version of the of this video, which is uh, presented uh, on the Force Forum on Robotics and Control Engineering by Yang Tran. So it is, it is, if my memory is correct, should be a half an hour video that covers more state of the art, more like. Uh, how we use this method in different concepts being for multi-agent systems. So you can also watch uh, that video. And again, um, one of the comments that uh, we are receiving about this method, what happens beyond T, right? What happens beyond T? Seconds. Well, in, when we first started to develop this finite time control approach, our intention was, you know, like, this goes from, let's say, in 10 seconds, this goes from point A to point B, then the mission is over. It basically lands, then there is no other time. But um, there are also applications, right, of what happens beyond the, let's say, you, let's say, let me use this quadcopter again. Let's say I have a moving truck and I would like to track it. So first, in 10 seconds, let's say capital T is 10, I am approaching, I am making my altitude to match with this truck. And after 10 seconds, I basically move with the truck. So I would like to follow it. 
So in that regard, um, we also have a paper that extends this from capital T seconds to beyond. And I am also leaving this uh, link of the paper to the comments as well. But to make the long story short, this is a new uh, time transformation approach. And I want you to remember one thing about this video, right? Once you transform, time transform this ODE to the stretch time interval, you can use all the control theory develop over infinite horizon uh, in control design which is uh, which has a which is which is a much richer literature as, as compared to the control theory developed specifically for finite time interval all right take care